Hello and uh, welcome to another 3D World tutorial. My name is Conrad Allen and I'll be showing you how to create an underwater terrain in uh, just a few minutes inside of view. So uh, to get started uh, we're going to drop down a procedural uh, terrain and double click it to edit. Uh, the first thing you'll notice uh, we've got a zeroed edges uh, fall off so we, we want to turn that off uh, in order to get uh, just a con continuous terrain and also we're going to go up to the top here and click invert uh, which will invert the, the terrain. It's not so apparent at the moment but when we go into the procedural tab here and we'll go and edit this function and we're going to change the uh, fractal to a rocky mountain fractal and immediately you'll, you'll notice uh, the difference. So in order to reduce this, the, the effect here, we're going to lower the gain and you'll see uh, what's happening as I go through. And we'll also untick separate mountains and increase the distortion factor on the right. Essentially this is these are the main three things that you uh, want to do when creating uh, an under, underwater terrain with the Rocky Mountain Fractal. Uh, so I'll just uh, double the resolution there so you can really see what's happening. I'm just going to increase the largest feature to sort of get a uh, closer closer zoom in on this terrain. I'm going to increase the smallest feature as well and decrease the roughness just tweaking it a couple of times until I'm happy with the uh, overall shape. So that's about, uh, that's about good at the moment. We're going to add another fractal by clicking on this node here and we're going to change this to a uh, grainy fractal. We're going to increase again the smallest feature. This just increases the um, or decreases the time it will take to render. Uh, increase the roughness just a tad and uh, increase the distortion quite quite somewhat. Uh, you, just, you don't want to cl clamp any of these values so now I'll add a blender and blend the two of these together just with a standard uh, combination blend uh, function at uh, 0.5 which is fine so you'll just see that it's sort of adding a little bit more variation to our terrain. Okay so we are done with the basic uh, creation uh, of our m major uh, element <coughs> and we'll just uh, drop it down to the ground. We're going to hide that as well and raise the camera up to uh, to look down at it. <coughs> Next thing I'll do is I'll just uh, before we move on I'll add the C uh, level which is from the left. Uh, add the the C plane and we can adjust it to lift it up a little bit. Uh, we'll also go into the material, edit material, turn off the foam layer and with the D lower layer in transparency we'll turn up the fading out so it's a little bit darker. This takes a little bit of playing around to uh, to get it right. If you um, to see, you know, get the right uh, depth, and uh, we'll also turn up the turn reflective with angle to around 60%. So that's about good. Now also, I'll change these uh, highlight intensities to uh, maximum to just uh, give us a nicer specular highlight as well. Okay, uh, next what we'll do is we'll drop down just a standard terrain and we'll go and edit it and we'll flatten it and multiply it to 4K. And this can take some time, which is why you flatten it first. Um, that can uh, considerably decrease the period of time it takes. And now we're on the left here, we're going to hit it with the dunes function. and you'll probably notice uh, depending on the on the scene and how you've created your previous trains you'll notice a, once it's done usually quite a uh, large uh, a large elevation in the center so you can see there got this huge elevation but that's fine we're going to squash this uh, in a moment so we'll just come back into the scene and squash it right down and we're also going to lower it below our other terrain. So I'll just delete the ground layer so we can properly see it. 
and bring these all of these up so we can uh, hopefully it will uh, properly show us what we're looking at and there we go so we we'll drop this train just to fill in these uh, these gaps in and amongst the our other train and you can't really see much happening here but once we go back into our procedural train and we'll load up <coughs> the old rock material from the rocks collection click OK we'll edit that material and make it a mixed material and load up the sand material from the multi uh, material layers rather sand flat will load in and that's almost uh, those two done we can add we can change a couple of the uh, features here uh, influence env of environment is the major one for this mixed material we'll just tick the distribution uh, turn off the influence of altitude because that's uh, not what we want we just want this the sand to appear on flat surfaces so material to 100% strength appears on flat surfaces and we'll also change the mixing proportions to more like around 25% because uh, we only want the sand right on the tips of this we can uh, add a couple more features as well to sort of uh, mix things up a little bit as well alright so next thing we do is we'll grab the other terrain that we have and we're going to load in under the rock uh, presets we're going to load in the sand material which is up the top right and on this one we're going to edit the material and go straight to the effects tab and crank up the ambient and luminosity and that's just going to give it a nicer glow so it sort of stands out from <coughs> the background that it's in alright to see these two uh, in action if I tick the, uh, the highlights <coughs> we will see the render will will now show us the effect so this that dark patch you can see here is our second terrain you can see the uh, the wave the waves in the uh, in the actual mesh of the train and the other section is our other terrain that's not quite looking right at the moment so we've just got to go in and uh, fiddle around with it so first thing we'll do is we'll actually just turn down uh, the luminosity of our uh, of our material so it's a little bit darker and uh, we could probably do a couple of other things but I think for uh, the moment that'll be fine our other sand color I like a, uh, a really bright and desaturated sand <coughs> gives a uh, better underwater look uh, and same for our other train we'll turn off the highlight color and go into overall color and turn turn that up as well to a much more white uh, and lastly uh, we'll double click on our C plane and we'll enable displace water surface and turn it up to about 65 percent this is really going to do the last uh, little bit of uh, difference which makes a huge amount of, uh, of change because you're actually displacing the uh, the water which catches more highlights and uh, and really hides a lot of the features uh, which are under under the water so now I think we're just about ready to uh, render I'm just going to move the Sun off to the side so it's not quite as uh, in your face so we have a little bit of the Sun getting caught but not not too much I mean you can see there in the uh, in the main viewport you can see the details that are coming through uh, from that seabed and I think I'm just going to turn down the murkiness so that we can see a little bit brighter colors and bring out a little bit of that detail maybe turn down the reflective uh, and pretty good to render now so I mean that's 10 minutes we've, we've uh, got that done and if you were doing it yourself you probably uh, be able to do it in uh, much less than that um, here you can see these these ridges uh, still need a little bit of work that's the top ridges of our first main terrain that's the sand accumulating on there and they probably uh, don't have enough of a, a blend into the to the rest of it also our, our main terrain is probably too 
uh, too steep so we can flatten that as well so we can come in and uh, just flatten it up a bit bring this uh, bring our second terrain up through it as well so that we because the second terrain is the design of the second terrain is to fill in those extra gaps as uh, the sand would be depositing into uh, those gaps so uh, back into the uh, water layer I'm going to turn up the, the darkness again and lastly for this one uh, to fix that sand distribution that we were seeing I'll go into the uh, mixing mode of the materials and I can just try uh, a couple of the different ones and then also increase the, uh, the, the smoothing um, alternatively I can also decrease the amount of sand so it's almost only on the very top tops so with that much done I'll do a preview render at a uh, slightly higher resolution and we'll see how it comes out so doing uh, underwater trains like this is <coughs> much more feasible than actually creating uh, creating coral reefs underneath uh, so obviously if you're looking straight down at the uh, at the train from close up you would start noticing uh, elements that uh, just don't look right but if you're looking out towards the sunset and you've just got a bit in the foreground that you're moving over it's uh, it's more than enough uh, and you could use any kind of uh, color through there as well so right well that's it I mean that's uh, that's the, the the base for uh, for a pretty good uh, image to you know you've got to add in a little bit more, more uh, detail and get some more elements in there but uh, if you want to you can uh, jump onto the CD there's the scene file that uh, that I made so you can use that to your heart's content and uh, pull it to pieces as well so uh, thanks for joining me